As guests to help the current batch now. Mentoring. Mentoring. Okay. There, I think that's the best way to Mentoring to the younger batches since uh, they're very young kids, so it's very different now with them. And I guess as individuals, as alumnos and alumna, we also wanted, wait, kaya pala to. This is something we can maintain, this is something we can do for ourselves, we can do for the school as, a, as an individual entity. It's been a long time since any of the alumni actually got to, at, at least for the chorale. Uh, it's been a while since anyone actually managed to get a lot of the batches together, especially the batches that used to compete together. And I guess it was a nice thing that we kaya pala. We can actually get everyone here in one place. And people are willing to make their commitments. I guess it's also there with they miss the school, they miss what we used to do. You know, it's something meaningful both to the alumni and also to, to the chorale in general, to the present batch. The chorale gave us a place to express ourselves through songs, through music. So whenever we feel sad, we feel happy, we feel angry, it was also a place for us to go and um, just let it all out and have fun and uh, you know just a place for self-expression. I think as far as Coral Cuento is concerned, just the whole experience of changing from Miss Valencia to Miss Panaligan was an experience. Because <laughs> it, it turned at least but it turned what the Coral was as a club into something so competitive. We, the first, passionate. Yeah, very passionate about everything. I've been through the three Coral teachers. So there was one more before Mrs. Valencia. Uh -huh. And then finally Mrs. Panaligan came in. So prior to that, like Oliver said, it was just a club. Something you like to do, I think, on Wednesdays or Fridays. And then when Mrs. P came, it became a serious thing that you actually had to sacrifice sports, PE. I remember the first contest we joined under Miss Panaligan was in 95. We had no idea. Listen, we were looking, I remember we were looking at the other choirs. And we weren't even the whole choral that's just really handpicked a competing group. We'd see the other choirs practice and they're also disciplined and stuff. And then we'd just be running around the place. Like anything. But when Miss Panaligan arrived, iba, almost military. We would be invited to sing in other schools. We also performed in a municipal beauty pageant, so we would from big it's gigs a to thing. from from a, from a big gig to small gigs. We would usually go out, um, and I think that's what made it enjoyable for all of us. Not just me; we were we were um, singing here in school and also outside. You spend more time with your crowd mates, especially if there's a performance than your classmates. So we really bonded. So the group, even if it's several batches, everybody knew what it was like to be in Coral if you're in that group. For the De La Salle alumni Coral and... Boy! Zobel! De La Salle. Boy! Boy! Boy. Uh, whenever you think of, of pushing limits, of really dedicating uh, everything to, to what you do, uh, I, I go back to, to having spent time in the Coral because that's, that's also another part of me, uh, the performing arts part of me. That, uh, that showed that you know you need to be dedicated, you need to have passion in what you do. It was also Sobel's way of providing the students not just the academic side of um, you know of uh, your of your education, but the Coral also provided us um, a venue to discover other facets of our lives that are not academically uh, connected. So it was a balancing force for us here in school. For the Dela Salle Zobel Alumni Choral. And, and we're